Hi, so today I'm going to teach you how to make this pencil holder. So let us get into it. First, delete the lamp by, by pressing on it and hitting X and delete. Now I'm going to just enable the screencast keys add-on so you can see uh, down here whatever I'm doing. So I'm going to delete this cube right over here, add in the cylinder. Now the density of your cylinder right here under all vertices will determine uh, how dense the mesh is. So make sure to decide if you want if you want like uh, many wires going across your mesh or not. Now what we're going to do is press number pad 1, go into edit mode, press ctrl R and add in a bunch of uh, loop cuts so we can get square faces. They don't have to be completely square but they should be fairly even. Um, so now what we're going to do is go into face selection mode, take the top and bottom face by by shift clicking on them, pressing P and selection, now they are a separate mesh. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the modifiers, add modifier and wireframe. You can already see what that does, but they are straight and we want them to be diagonal. So what we're going to do is tap into edit mode, hit F3 while we selected everything, go to poke, poke faces, now we have all of these triangles. And when we press uh, Alt-J, we can see that they uh, basically become in quads again. So they have four sides, and that's what we want in modeling, and also they have an angle to them. If we tab out of edit mode now, we can see that they are diagonal. Now what we're going to do is make them a bit smoother, since we can see that they are very sharp. This we can do by adding in a subdivision surface modifier. I wouldn't do that necessarily if... Um, if this wasn't the, uh, the focal point of the scene but if you really want to focus on this you should add a subdivision surface. Now we can see that these are uh, fairly rounded and there are no squares anymore or no sharp edges. Um, that is good if you want that, if you want these circles, circular holes, but I want them to have those 90 degree edges uh, all around so I'm going to go to crease edges in the wireframe modifier and now we can see that this is round and this is uh, fairly sharp. Um, I'm going to set this down to 1 in both render and viewport so it uh, doesn't take as much memory and it renders a bit faster. Um, so now I'm going to select uh, the top face which selects also the bottom face, select it in, um, in edit mode, hit X only faces and that leaves us with only the edge. Now we can scale the edge down by alt clicking on it or selecting everything manually, although I will just alt click on it. Uh, scale it in a little bit and then press E and S to scale it like this. And now what we're going to do is hit L on them so everything gets selected on them. Hit E, bring it down and that's good. Now we can hit Control 2 to get yet another subdivision surface and while going into edit mode selecting everything, uh, at least the top part, bring it up a little bit so everything on the top side is covered and now we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. Uh, we're going to select this and bring it up a little bit, scale it up a little bit E to extrude down, select the top and bottom face, hit I twice, once like this and once like this, so we get rid of this uh, weird shading going on because uh, before these were angons, they are still but now we can't see any stretching or bad shading. And that is how you create this pencil holder, it's basically done. If you want more of these uh, things you could have uh, done that in the beginning. Uh, by adding more segments or more vertices, but you can still do that now by adding in the subdivision surface modifier and placing it above the wireframe. Just make sure to add no, uh, to not add too many, since it will crash your computer if you don't have really good hardware. So now we have time for some shading since the tutorial isn't that long. Uh, what we're going to do is add in an HDRI, uh, environment texture, like you go to the world tab, uh, go to the circle, environment texture, where you save your HDRIs. And I'm going to select this one, 
it looks fairly good. So I want to add in a plane, so I just select this bottom face, shift S, cursor to select it, that snaps the, uh, the pivot point or the cursor to the to the bottom face. Now I'm going to add a mesh plane, scale it up a bunch, uh, go to my camera, position it to where I want it to be. I know this HDRI, so I know I want to be here. And basically, if I go to cycles, and render this out, I can see that this looks fairly good. But we obviously need the material, so let me just place this right there. Uh, that looks good. Let's go to shading. Uh, press 0 on the number pad to snap to your camera. Add in a new material for this. And I'm gonna make mine all the way black. You can make it whatever you want. I'm gonna set metallic to 1. Roughness I would set to 0.35 uh, Same with this here just add in the same material and That's basically it um, Or what you could also do is take in the noise uh, Add in the noise texture plug it into the roughness and Add in the color ramp I'm gonna make this a little bit lighter this a little bit darker and we will get the good result. With this one, I'm going to add in another material, make it make it a little bit gray, add in another noise texture like this, without adding anything else, and it should be fine. If I go to ren if I'm going to render this, we can see that looks really good. I'm just going to render it like this with some depth of field by adding in a, an empty plain axis, selecting the camera, going to depth of field, selecting the empty and maybe making this one point, oh it's just F2. The lower this is the more depth of field you'll get, or maybe even 1.2. Uh, and the higher this number is the less depth of field you get. This is not necessary to do. So we will see each other after the render. And so this is how you make it. Looks fairly good, especially from a distance. You can go ahead and make it smaller, fit it in your scene, throw something in there, make a pen, something like I have made in the beginning. And if you want to make it a trash can, you can add in the lattice like this, scale it up so it covers all of this. And basically Select your model, add in the lattice modifier on the bottom. Select the lattice, do the same for this one. Then select the lattice, uh, go into edit mode, select the four vertices on the bottom, taper them in, and you basically have a trash can. It's that easy taper them in even more. Looks fabulous. So do what you want, have fun with it and basically if you will like this video consider liking, sharing, commenting what you want to see next and if you need help uh, you can text into the Discord uh, server I will link down below or look at my website where I have a roadmap where you can download this model until next week because I will post a new model there for free download every week. So we will see each other, bye!